So if you use Blender at all, you're probably aware of the amazing Swift's Army Knife of Rigging, the Rigify add-on. Hey, and since Blender 2.79, there's uh, some extra starter meta rigs, and one of them is the Shark Rig. You just go to Add an Armature, uh, now we have Animals, and Shark Rig. It's pretty neat, and I figured this is likely to be the standard way, or the de facto standard of rigging fish in Blender for a while to come. So I thought I might celebrate and try my hand at writing an add-on that sort of stands on the shoulder of this new fish rig. One that simulates the swimming action of a fish and bakes the action to keyframes. Ah, and not just one fish, potentially a whole school of fish. If you haven't used Rigify before, well, here's a 30 second tour on how to make that fish modeling or the fish rig happen. What you do is you make or you find a model like this shark. It doesn't have to be a shark, it can be a, a fish also. You add a shark meta rig from the add armature menu and then in edit mode you adjust it to suit the model. You know, you put it in edit mode, tweak it around until it fits or you can use pose mode but you have to follow that with control A and assign that uh, shape to the rest pose. When you're done, you can select generate rig from the armature panel and there's a new rig. You can get rid of the meta rig, you don't actually need it anymore. After that, you just parent your model to the rig, and you can probably use the auto weighting feature because on a fish, they should work pretty good. Maybe you have to adjust the weights a little bit as required. One little tip for the Rigify Shark Rig, I think if you select a head, neck and tail follow and set the tail fin curvature to get one smooth curve. Okay, so let's talk about fish simulation. Uh, if I just use this pre-made model uh, as a demonstration model, uh, you would first need to install the fish simulation add-on. You can download it from the link given in the description. You install it in the usual way. You just select the fish sim.zip and then um, enable the fish simulation add-on. What you should see now is if you select the rig, then on the tool panel on the left hand side, there should be a fish sim panel. That in turn is made up of two panels, there's fish sim and simulation properties. Look at fish sim just for the second. We've got a simulation start frame of one and we can adjust the simulation end frame of 250, but let's use that for default. We add a target which just puts in a simple bounding box object uh, which is just a, you can edit that if you like, you can, let's just for example make it a little smaller, give it a very slightly more fishy sort of appearance, but you don't have to, you can use the, uh, use the one that's generated automatically. And the idea is we're going to animate this target, for the moment, how about I just drag it over here, we select the rig and press simulate, and what should happen is keyframe should be entered for that range of 1 to 250 frames and some sort of swimming motion should occur. You can see the spine bends, the tail goes backwards and forwards, the tips of the tail uh, are responding to water pressure, and the, um, the pectoral fins are also moving. Uh, now, you can see the sharks swimming fairly slowly, and I've just recently realized that um, uh, the, the simulation parameters aren't very steady with scale. So this shark is rather bigger than the original fish sim rig, uh, the original rigify rig, sorry. And that just means that some of the parameters, they're physically based, so it's uh, what it means is we actually need, say, more power for this shark to swim at a reasonable sort of speed. So we can just adjust um, these parameters. I've tried to order them in order of importance. So these main parameters, the mass, the water drag, the power, stroke period, which is how many frames between each flap of the tail, and the maximum tail angle from side to side. They're the main ones that affect the speed, and really the turning speed is mainly the, um, mainly the turn assist value, bigger, lets it turn faster. So I've adjusted the power to four. We just press, um, send it back to the start and press simulate again and you can see the effect is uh, much faster swimming action. There we go, that looks a little bit more realistic. 
If you don't like that, you can adjust those parameters, adjust the turning parameters, adjust the tracking to the target, and lots of fine tuning, including how stiff the fins are and how much deflection they get due to the effect of uh, water resistance. Now, of course, you probably just don't want to drag that target like that. Um, you can animate it with keyframes, or perhaps a better example would be to put in, say, a curve, which I'll do there. I'll just move it a little bit, rotate it in the right direction, scale it up a bit, and we'll just uh, parent the target object to this curve object. Tell it to follow the path, and I'll just um, put in 250 keyframes so it should move smoothly over the whole duration of that 250 frames. So now if I click on the rig again and we press simulate, you can see the swimming is just a bit more controlled because the target is just staying slightly. The shark is actually slowing down its motion of swimming to keep the speed uh, and stay close to that target object. And in a way, this is largely what we're going to do, is animate the target object and then adjust the swing parameters, particularly the main parameters, to have the shark just keep up with the target uh, without falling behind and without constantly overshooting and uh, spinning around. Of course, we could be more adventurous with the path that the shark takes, so I'll just put a few curves into it, both up and down and just hit simulate again after selecting the rig and you can see the shark will uh, depending on the parameters again just uh, follow that box around in a fairly realistic way and of course i mentioned earlier animating one shark manually isn't probably such a big deal i'd say you could do this uh, animation of this uh, of this rig to do some sort of similar action. What I thought was it would be handy if we could do this for more than one rig. Uh, there's a few little tools to make that easier. Uh, so what I'll do just to demonstrate, let's just duplicate the target and the path uh, just a couple of times just to uh, see how this works. Um, yeah, I'll do it one more time. Okay, so the idea is each one of these is animated and of course they don't have to be exactly the same if we just grab that and make it a bit different just for the sake of it. Uh, so the idea is to animate all the targets and have them move in the sort of way that you would expect the school of fish to move. Once you've done that, you can select the shark rig again to get back to the fish sim tab and use this copy models little box here. Uh, so distribute, distribute multiple copies of the rig. I'll just tick that and press copy models. And what happens is it copies, uh, it identifies all the targets and it copies the rig and attaches the rig to each of those targets. Now when I press simulate, it won't just simulate one, it'll simulate all of them. It's a little odd, it sort of does one at a time and the keyframes for any ones that you've previously animated will play out. So it, it looks a... Uh, it does look just a little bit odd. I've thought of changing it, but frankly, I, I find it quite handy that it works that way. And you can see now it's playing all four sharks through their individual simulation following that, uh, following that property. There is a field here for the maximum number of copies. And the idea with that is perhaps you don't want all of those copies. Maybe we'll just um, start again without, those, without all of them. Uh, maybe you're animating like 40 fish and you just want to check, you just want to make sure that the animation is going to work okay. So we can limit the maximum number of copies to whatever we like. We can simulate, you can hit the right mouse key or escape just so that you don't run for too long and just verify that that fish is keeping up with the target and the swimming action is how you like. Once you've got that right, maybe you'll simulate again, let it run through the full range of motion. Is everything still going okay? You can then um, increase it to two sharks. Uh, sorry, two sharks. And 
copy those models. Now we have two. Hit simulate, it does one, then it does the second one and the third one. Everything looks fine, so let's just bump that up to a big number again and it will fill up all the targets with the, with the actual rigs and we can simulate them. Notice I haven't included the mesh yet because the, the mesh potentially slows down that simulation process because of course they all have to be, um, that, in, that takes quite a bit of computer time to make the mesh deform to the rig. So having done this, I can now select the rig and select distribute multiple copies of the meshes. So when I do that, you can see the, all the meshes which are parented to that rig either with an armature modifier or just parented to a bone, they'll be copied to the same bones and same places with the same armature modifier and set it up for each one of the models to be animated. So you can see that animation was still there for all the rigs. So when I play it, we're playing here at 25 frames a second with our four models. Perhaps we can see it better if we just um, select the only render and we can see our four sharks swimming very slowly as it turns out. Of course, we could make them swim faster if we wanted to. Okay, so let's take this to the next level, I guess. Uh, we've seen how we can animate a number of targets and then share the rigs around to them. Now, let's say we had another mechanism to actually generate the targets and move them around. Well, there's quite a lot of options. We could um, we could animate them all individually, uh, but there's several add-ins like uh, animation nodes comes to mind. But what I'm just going to show you is the nifty add-on called Crowdmaster that you might have come across. It's a free add-on made by some really nice guys. And, and it's really designed almost exactly for the purpose of generating a large number of objects and moving them in predefined patterns. Uh, to use it, uh, you have to enable it, of course, download it and enable the Crowd Master add-on. And if you haven't come across Crowdmaster before, I, I don't think I'm in a position to explain every aspect. Uh, but just to give you a quick idea what can be done, uh, I've got a few shapes in this scene. And there's a mesh over here, there's a mesh here, a couple of rectangles and a path. And the idea with Crowdmaster, if I just expand this, is it gives you nodes, a node interface for two different types of purposes. One of them is to set up shapes in particular places. And I've got a really simple setup here. Um, it's the one I used for that video you saw at the start of this um, start of this tutorial. And the idea is you select an object, and I've done this for two different types of objects. There's an archer fish object and a shark object, or at least the proxies that the objects are going to follow. We've set them up with a little bit of randomization, and each one of these is going to be assigned to vertices on a mesh. And so what I've done is this one over here is a mesh to hold a number of sharks, and this mesh here is to hold a number of smaller fish. And you can set them up just by clicking on the Generate Agents um, button there. And you can see that Crowdmaster has very generously managed to locate the targets for two different types of fish in a, in a sort of manner that uh, we're interested in doing. These targets were copied from the shark over here in this view. And these targets here were copied from this little archer fish guy over here in this window. And so we can then use Crowdmaster to move these target proxies around. I'm no expert. I'm trying to be a bit more of an expert in Crowdmaster. It can be a little tricky, but uh, what I've done, uh, there's a separate node set up for each type. This one is, the, uh, is for the sharks and I've probably got a few stray things sitting here. The idea is I've set up a path follow setting and a bit of an anti-collision setting. And, uh, oops, sorry, this is the anti-collision setting here. And there's also the, um, the actual uh, motion of the shark here. And 
a little bit of random noise as well to give some variation. There's another one here for the archer fish and in this it looks a little bit of a mess and in fact a lot of this isn't used. I just tried to to sort of clarify my understanding of the different types of motions by taking some of the examples that John Roper and the guys have set up. And uh, so this one is to get all the fish to align with each other. This one is to get them to move towards each other. This one makes them move away from each other. This one makes them stay within the two sets of rectangles there as if they're in a fish tank. And a few other little bits and pieces. I've just got a timer in there that after a little while it will uh, free up the restriction of the tank uh, requirement and it will allow the it will allow the uh, speed to um, to increase after that timer goes off so that's an, uh, that's um, the idea that I had was to have the shark swimming along the path towards the archer fish the archer fish would stay within the constraints of those rectangular objects and they would move around and avoid each other uh, just a little bit and then after a timer when the sharks are getting close the restriction would be removed, the speed would increase and they'd all appear to swim away. And we can get this to operate uh, just by pressing the start simulation here and it will animate over, over, 600, over 600 frames. So let's, uh, let's get it going and you can see we set it off and pretty much like the shark simulation in a way uh, it's going to animate the motion of all of those targets. Now Crowdmaster's clever enough to actually be able to drive uh, the animation of rigs as well. Uh, as long as you set up the actions you can set up rules and these no boxes to select this action or that action and you could do it but it, I think the chances of getting a fluid swimming motion from that and not a robotic swim forward, swim to the left, swim up, swim down, that sort of action. Um, it's just a little difficult to get that smooth flowing action of fish that you expect. So this is where the fish simulator comes in. We can use these nifty add-ons which provide like the artificial intelligence of what the fish want to do and then let the actual physical animation uh, be done by the fish simulation software. In fact, I have a theory like the fish simulation is one thing, but I don't see why it can't be extended to lots of things birds, bees, butterflies, cars, planes, lots of things. So I'm going to be exploring this um, hopefully in the future. So that animation's done, it's all baked to keyframes, so we have all these targets being simulated um, in a suitable way. And now I, I won't go through this too thoroughly, but uh, what I can do is select the rig of the archer fish now and use this copy models mechanism to maybe make, let's say, two copies. We'll just copy two rigs into that archer fish area and I'll just try simulating them and see how the motion goes. So we can look at these um, and just see, oh, it's going way too fast. So I can stop. I can um, I can adjust the um, the power down to a much smaller um, much smaller number. I can adjust the mass. I can see how fast they swim. Like let's the little fish. Maybe they flick their tails faster. Uh, we can go back, have another whirl, and just see if that action uh, of that fish is following that target better. It's better, but it's not great. But um, for the moment, we won't worry about it. Uh, and then of course I can increase that number to a big number and copy all those models and suddenly we've got a, a, complete, um, a complete school of fish. Uh, there's a little bit of random size variation and I hadn't mentioned before but that copy rigs will also um, uh, vary the size of the, so we can have big fish and little fish and random sizes and in fact the, the colour of the archer fish on the shader also has a random variation to make it uh, look a bit better. And then of course we can do exactly the same with the shark rig. If I select this layer, this is where the shark rig is. And so we can go through and do the exact same exercise with the shark. You know, we can select one or two. Uh, we can copy the model into there. We can simulate it a little bit. And um, when we're happy, I can make that a bigger number. We can copy all the rest of the shark models in. And 
when we're happy and simulate that. And when all of the fish are simulated, we'll add in the meshes, which is of course just that little bit slower. Um, uh, once we've added the meshes, that's why we leave that to the last step. So we can copy the actual um, shark meshes in so that, um, just hide that for a second. So you can see all the shark guys are there. And if I go back and select the archer fish rig, um, then I can distribute copies of those archer fish as well. So that might take just a second. And there's all our copies of the, oops, if we could just see them behind these, uh, behind these containing shapes, but there's all the copies of the archer fish. And basically that's the scene you saw when we first started that tutorial. Now, um, there's written information on the GitHub site, uh, references in the description. Um, and I hope you enjoy this add-on.